Hello, my name is Norm. I'm coming to you from Calgary, Alberta, in the community of Brentwood. I'm here to talk to you about uh, this nesting habitat that I've been building for chickadees and nuthatches. So the basic idea is um, I'm trying to simulate nature and in nature both the chickadees and red-breasted nuthatches are primary cavity nesters. So the habitat that they're seeking are standing snags. And a snag is a dead tree that has not fallen over yet. So the tree dies and starts to rot, but it hasn't fallen. That's ideal habitat for primary cavity nesters. And unfortunately, in the city, what do you do with a dead tree immediately? You cut it down for safety, because you don't want to have dead trees falling over in the wind. But that loses the ideal habitat for all these native birds. So that's sort of the onus um, and why I decided to try to simulate these artificial snags and to create some habitat in the city for black capped chickadees, which is now the city of Calgary's official bird, and the red-breasted nuthatches. So what makes them only for chickadees and red-breasted nuthatches? Well, the simplest answer is the size of the portal, the entrance portal. So this is one and one eighth exactly. And I have a piece of copper, stylish copper, that will prevent the invasive house sparrows, which are always trying to eat the chickadee babies and eat the nuthatch babies. They're an invasive species, the house sparrows. Please do not allow them to nest. So, that's going to prevent the invasive species from getting out. Um, I've designed it to almost like a tree trunk, so it's long and narrow. And if we look inside, what I do is I stuff the inside of the nesting box with wood chips. It's just hamster bedding, but it triggers these primary cavity nesters. They see this and they realize they can start excavating it and they will excavate it immediately. They'll probably be on this tomorrow, certainly this week. They won't start to sleep in it. The, the mom, the female will start to roost in it come uh, spring when it gets a little bit warmer. And that's where she becomes territorial. And you'll see the mated pair. There's, a, there's the male, female, they stay together. They excavate the nest together. She lays the eggs, but the male is around all the time feeding the babies with the female. It's fascinating to watch. It is slow TV bird drama, but it never ends. You'll get tuned into it when you start seeing what's going on on the inside, as well as what's going on on the outside. And, I, and it is an observational nesting box. So I do add a camera and the way I add a camera, I'll show you the camera that we use. They're a Wise Cam V3 version three, not the pro version, but these can be bought on Amazon. I can buy them for you or you can buy them yourself, but you will need to set them up for your own home Wi-Fi and for your own personal account um, to, so that they become established. So all these cameras, they're magnetic on the bottom. They have a little stand, you can lift it up and turn it, but the bottom is magnetic and it comes with a little metal plate, which I've stuck on the side. So I'm gonna be getting, I've ordered some washers, some metal washers, two inch washers that I'm gonna put in there as part of the kit. So you can order the camera separately and the nesting box will be ready to accept the camera. Um, what are some other features I can show you? So this is on the inside. This is what the inside of the birdhouse looks like. If you turn it around, it'll be facing like this. So these scores, these kerf cuts are made to act as a ladder so they can get up and down. And I glue wooden blocks on the side um, of the ladder as well. So this enables, so when the babies are hatched and they're, they're getting large, you, they're usually in the nest for a few weeks, but they will start to climb the ladder and come to the door and the parents will feed the strongest ones at the door. So there's a lot of competition for those babies to be the first one at the door and to be the first one fed. So that's part of the observation. So, um, yeah, the installation of these. Oh, what else can I, here's another. We'll talk about the installation in a second. So on the roof, I've made a mushroom cap roof. This is, the whole birdhouse is made out of raw lumber. And the birds seem, to, birds seem to like the raw lumber. I think you could paint these any color or stain them to match your house and uh, the birds will still take to it. I just don't paint them yet, I probably could but uh, these things will last for years, just uh, raw lumber like this. 
So uh, there's a there's really two ways to install them the easiest. The re way I put it on the seven foot two by four is because it just makes the installation easy. So the weight of the birdhouse can rest on the bottom. Seven feet's high enough for these birds. They'll still take to them, the chickadees and the nuthatches yet. It's still tall enough. You can get a little step ladder to get inside if you want to adjust the camera to get it perfectly on the nest. Sometimes I'll do that after. Don't disturb the bird when she's sitting on eggs because she might abandon the nest. But once the chicks are hatched, um, then feel free to go in there and adjust. She'll squawk and she won't be happy and she might even sit at the bottom scared, but you will be able to adjust the camera and she won't abandon the nest. So once we have our camera inside, so let me pull up my camera again. We've got my camera. I haven't set this one up with my personal Wi-Fi yet, but if you follow, there's a quick start guide in my pocket. So the camera comes with a quick start guide, follow the instructions, get the camera hooked up to your Wi-Fi and to your personal account and then you want to come in and we can put it on the piece of metal. So you're not going to see the birds uh, until they've excavated, but that's okay. And we just take our, our lid and we'll put it on. I'll talk about, we do need to supply a power extension cord to the birdhouse. And I'll talk about that in a minute. That's the last step of our installation. So there's two ways to install this. You can find an existing four by four fence post that you might have on a wooden fence. And then it's as simple as just put in two or three screws. Wood deck screws work fine. You can even, if you want it up higher, you can even boost it up and put in a few wood deck screws. That works as well. Um, nice and easy. And also this allows the seven foot two by four post will allow installation on one of these metal chain link fences. That's what I'm gonna do right now. So I've got some zip ties. I'm just gonna zip tie the two by four to the fence post, to the chain link fence post. So here, let's do this. So I have it resting and I am, it's ideally, I think the birds, want they want lots of sun and they want lots of warmth you got to think of those cold spring mornings so um south facing as long as it's getting lots of sun we're doing pretty good but the birds i found do like the south facing ones so i've got these long zip ties that aren't quite long enough so it doesn't matter what size zip tie you have if you put them together they will do the trick so I'm gonna put them, so I've got two zipped together and now I'm just wrapping it around my fence post. I'm just gonna do this in two places. So there's the one. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom and you can see it is basically up already. So these birds will discover it, I'm not kidding, within the next week I'll see these wood chips being on the ground because they're excavating it. And you might hear them start to let a little territorial cry because they are loving it. And that is good enough for the birds. That's it. So if you're interested in purchasing one of these or seeing some more YouTube videos of my previous years of them nesting, you can look at viewbirdnest.com. www.viewbirdnest.com. Anyways, they're 195 bucks I'm selling these things for. Um, yeah, and you can we can deliver before Christmas uh, anywhere in Northwest Calgary. I can help with installation for an extra 50 bucks. I'll show you how to hook up the camera. Uh, basically what it is, you just bring the extension cord, you bring the adapter. I have 
one of those extension core joiners. They sell them at Canadian Tire. You put the two extension cores together. It's like a little clam thing. I've ordered some of them. I'm going to be including them with the kit. They haven't quite arrived, but I'll hang it underneath here. The extension cord will come up. The power adapter, or the USB cable will come down with the USB adapter protected underneath. And yeah. And the, oh, here's another little feature. The floor of the bird nest can be taken out if you look underneath. So the floor of the bird nest has the corners cut. So if there is moisture, the moisture will trickle out and it can be removed. That floor can be removed with one screw at the end of the season and you can clean the bird nest out and then repack it full of wood chips for the next year. Uh, the birds love it. You're gonna get birds. It's a lot of fun to watch. Um, yeah, give us a call. Happy birding.